water covers almost 70% of the Earth's surface. This is where life on our planet first began. And some of these early underwater creatures were big predatory fish. Giant squid, stingrays, toothed whales, and other dangerous predators have long roamed the sea. And 300 million years before T. rex took its first bite, an apex predator was scouring the watery depths. The shark. Paleontologists have found remarkable fossil evidence of these predators going back more than 400 million years. The biology of these sharks has remained remarkably stable for all this time. If you looked at a shark from, say, 350 million years ago, you'd have no trouble identifying that as a shark. I mean, they might have some differences with what we think of as sort of the conventional look of sharks today, but you would, you would not be confused. You would know right away that you were looking at a shark. Although many of these prehistoric sharks are now extinct, the great white shark, which still roams the sea today, has survived more than 10 million years. <laughs> It has become the ultimate ocean predator. But the great white paled in comparison to another giant shark that ruled the seven seas, dominating every other predator in the ocean. Megalodon. Literally translated, it means big tooth. Megalodon was a giant fossil shark, lived from maybe 25 million years ago up to about 2 million years ago. The largest oceanic predatory shark that we are aware of in the fossil record. Fantastic, huge, enormous predator that uh, the likes of which the oceans hadn't seen before or since. It was one of the biggest predators of all time. You've got these massive, razor blade sharp teeth attached to an animal the size of a greyhound bus. I mean, this was the ultimate predator. Never has an apex predator made such a huge mark on the planet, only to leave so little trace of itself behind. It's, it's like the ultimate detective story. We truly don't know exactly what the megalodon looked like. We can only assume how it looked and how it killed. In order to solve this mystery, scientists need fossil evidence. But in the case of Megalodon, there are no skeletons left to study. This presents a major challenge to researchers. All creatures, in the sea or on land, begin to decompose and fall apart the moment they die. For those with skeletons, within a short period of time, all that is left are the bones. But when it comes to Megalodon, there's a hitch. The shark's skeleton is constructed almost entirely of cartilage. Consequently, there are very few fossilized remains left to show scientists the size and shape of this gigantic fish. Cartilage, pliable and light, it's the balsa wood of the body. But exposed to salt water, sand, and especially bacteria, Megalodon's skeleton has little staying power. The cartilage is this brownish yellow material. That's the flexible component of the cartilaginous skeleton. You can actually see the little tiny prisms which add structural support and rigidity to the otherwise flexible cartilage. And that's what gives the skeleton its strength. However, because these individual little prisms of cartilage are held together with organic fibers, after the shark dies, those organic fibers can then decompose. Within weeks, shark cartilage breaks apart and disappears. The teeth, protected by an enamel coating, are one of only two parts of the skeleton to survive. These massive teeth are extremely long. Scientists are using them as the building blocks to reverse engineer the giant shark. The only other known fossil remains are a few small pieces of backbone. 
The Calvert Cliffs along the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland are a well-known site for uncovering fossils of prehistoric sharks. Dr. Stephen Godfrey has been digging for fossils here for more than 10 years. In that time, he has not found a single megalodon tooth. Oh yeah, this is great. The tide's way up. Along with Dr. Breton Kent, Godfrey scours the area, searching for fossil clues. Oh, there's a shark tooth, a little one. Yep. Oh, there's some bone right here. This was for about a 12 or 14 foot long shark. Um, the root's missing, it's just the crown. You gotta see this. After a few minutes of searching the face of the cliff, Dr. Godfrey spies something about a meter up the wall. <laughs> this has never happened to me before. <laughs> A big mag? <laughs> well, it's not really big, but it's a mag, and it's in really nice condition, and it's just sitting there. This is so sweet. You can see the serrations on it. It's pristine. I mean, check that out. Oh, absolutely Look at perfect. That. Oh, Look at that. that is gorgeous. Incredibly, on the one day cameras are there to record their fossil hunt, Godfrey extracts a rare 10 to 12 million year old megalodon shark tooth from the clay laden cliff. Nice upper lateral. Beautiful it doesn't condition. Doesn't get any better than that. That's Look at incredible. that. That's beautiful. A gorgeous one. That's very nice. One of the interesting things about this tooth, if you notice the tip, there's a compression fracture on it. Compression fracture is when the tooth bites down vertically and strikes something hard like bone. It actually, instead of producing a, a flake off of the side, it actually crushes the tip to powder and compression fractures themselves are very common on megalodon teeth. Compression fractures and other violent accidents from biting down on their prey have resulted in a unique biological adaptation by sharks over the last 400 million years. Constant and lifelong tooth replacement. Over a 25 year lifespan, a shark will shed approximately 20,000 teeth. Other predators such as crocodiles also replace teeth but to produce so many in a lifetime is a characteristic unique to the shark. The shark's mouth and gums contain an endless conveyor belt of replacement teeth just below and above the gum line, waiting to flip forward and take their place in the front row of teeth. These megalodon teeth can unlock a tremendous amount of information about this creature. Once you find a big tooth, the rest is gravy. <laughs> the, day, the day has been made. Yeah. With the found teeth piling up in museum collections around the world, interest in megalodon intensified over the last few centuries. In 1909, ichthyologists and paleontologists in New York at the American Museum of Natural History labored with great effort to build what they thought was the ultimate megalodon jaw. The finished jaw caused a sensation, showing a gaping, three-meter-high collection of nasty, sharp-edged teeth but they'd made some crucial errors in their reconstruction that paleontologists continue to correct and refine even today. Zoologist and shark collector Dr. Gordon Hubble has been studying shark teeth and jaws for four decades. Back in early 1900s when they reconstructed that megalodon jaw, uh, besides having problem with keeping the teeth in the jaw, uh, they didn't know the dental formula, they know, didn't know the dental arrangement of megalodon, so the teeth were just put in kind of haphazardly. In constructing the display, the scientists appear to have chosen the largest teeth available from fossil deposits around the world. And the dimensions reflected that. The jaw was enormous. The 1909 effort eventually raised questions. Would the teeth going front to back all be that large? And then there were the sheer number of teeth in the jaw. It seemed excessive. This version of Megalodon had more teeth than the modern Great White. These doubts fueled an even larger debate. Is the modern Great White Shark the best comparison model for the size and shape of Megalodon? How closely related are these creatures from the deep? Brian Johnson has been studying the living Great White Shark up close and personal in the waters off the coast of South Africa. I think when the guys discovered these huge fossilized teeth, they wanted to find something in today's world that possibly was similar. And the only real shark that springs to mind is a great white shark. 
And so this is why you always get this constant comparison between the great white and the megalodon. Was the white shark just a little version of what the megalodon was back in prehistoric times? The massive predatory great white holds a mythical place in the minds of fishermen, sailors, and other sea lovers. The maximum size that a great white gets is probably among shark biologists the most debated question that is always talked about. You speak to any fisherman and he says, my boat's 20 foot long and it was two foot that way, two foot that way, must be 25, 26 foot. And that's probably not the case. In truth, the largest modern great white sharks are believed to be about six meters long with a maximum weight around 1,800 kilograms. Megalodon is commonly thought to reach between 15 to 17 meters with an almost unimaginable weight of 45,000 kilograms. I think the comparison is pretty good between the great whites and the Megalodon, but you also must remember the only information we have about the Meg is from his teeth. I think the main similarity between the teeth of the Meg and the teeth of the Great White, other than their big size, is probably the serrations, the triangular serrations. And what that shows immediately is that both sharks, rather than swallowing their prey whole, was taking chunks out of very big prey, possibly as big as themselves. In 1988, scientist Gordon Hubble received a call from a fellow fossil collector about a remarkable find at a phosphate mine in Florida. Larry Martin had uncovered a set of 95 teeth from one megalodon shark. This matched set became the holy grail of megalodon research. They unlocked part of the mystery surrounding this astounding creature. This is the most complete set of associated megalodon teeth that has ever been found. The reason why this is significant is that once we can arrange these teeth, we can figure out if the animal is truly related to the white shark line or if it's related to some other species of sharks. 80 years after the first jaw was constructed, Hubble's teeth may hold the key to understanding the true shape and size of the greatest predator the sea has ever known. Megalodon, a ferocious predator that roamed the seas for 20 million years, and all that's left is the teeth and a few scattered vertebrae. In 1988, Gordon Hubble helped to identify the most complete set of megalodon teeth. But how did these teeth fit together inside the shark's jaw? Hubble was stumped. It led to about 10 years of frustration because we, we didn't know at the time for sure what the dental formula on the megalodon shark was. And so uh, every time a scientist came to visit us or just anybody that wanted to look at these teeth, we had uh, them place these teeth how they thought they would go in the mouth. The third tooth is a prominent feature in the modern great white shark's jawline. And that's what really bothered us. It wasn't until we realized that the megalodon is an entirely different line of evolution and does not have that third upper tooth that small tooth that slants in, and indeed has a third upper tooth that's about the same size as the first two teeth. Then we figured it out and everything fell into place. There are 24 teeth in the upper jaw. The lower jaw has a total of 22 teeth. Behind the 46 teeth in the front row, approximately 200 more teeth lie in rows, waiting to flip forward to the front and take their place on the predatory battlefield. Other scientists and museums were now interested in taking that knowledge and putting together a realistic megalodon jaw recreation. Fossil collector John Babiars has amassed a huge collection of megalodon teeth. With the help of museum curator Brad Archer, he undertook the task of building an accurate recreation of the megalodon jaw. No one had done the project before, at least not in the scale that we wanted. Babiars and Archer worked diligently to figure out the shape and placement of the upper and lower teeth, using models and pictures of great white jaws and earlier megalodon reconstructions. Right off the bat, we figured, oh, damn, these teeth aren't going to fit because they're way too big and they, there's no room in the jaw unless this shark only had four teeth in a row. 